The United States is one of the most prosperous nations in the world. Despite this, however, millions of Americans wrestle with the challenge of hunger, uncertain from where their next meal will come. Around one in seven people in the country, or nearly 45 million, grapple with food insecurity. This glaring truth contrasts sharply with the nation's relatively high average income per capita and the billions of tons of surplus and unused food discarded as waste each year. Every day at noon, George Brown comes to this church to have his meal. Every day. For how many years already? Oh, a lot of years. A lot of years, I think since uh, 98. 98? Yeah. Brown is unemployed. His sole reason for being here is hunger. He's one of tens of millions of Americans who lack sufficient food and who must rely on community soup kitchens for survival. Why are you coming here, George? I come here, I got sick from my heart. I got heart problems now. I used to work, you know, I didn't have no time to come here, but I got sick, I lost my house because I couldn't pay the taxes. Uh, it's sad, it's sad being homeless. Ooh, I never thought it was gonna happen to me. It's not just those without jobs or homes. Numerous employed individuals also rely on this soup kitchen because their incomes fall short of covering their expenses. Erwin Jones works for a company, but his income after taxes and other expenditures places him in a condition of deprivation. It helped me a lot. It helped me a lot along the way. Yep. And um, you meet a lot of nice people, you know, that want help. You, know, you got to ask for it, if you, you know, if you want it. But, you know, you, you just can't just fall back and just say, ah, I don't need that. No, you got to ask for it. Despite the seemingly low unemployment rate in America, many working individuals still struggle to earn sufficient income. Consequently, they experience poverty, of which hunger is a major element. According to a report by the Department of Agriculture, at least 17 million American households experienced food insecurity in 2022, with nearly 13 million children living in a family which had problems getting food at some point during the year. Then you have other people who um, have lost their jobs, they have more or less nowhere to live, and they're, they're really struggling, and, and I, I realize that, and I, I think for me, I just want to help everybody and I can't help everybody and you know I recognize that. To me another reason everybody's too uh, self-absorbed in themselves you know they claim they you know want to help but you know actions speak louder than words. If you truly want to help you take a half a million dollars and go out here and buy some a soup kitchen food and equipment that they need to feed the people or better yet come in yourself and help distribute the food but it just doesn't happen, and it's sad. It really, really is sad. So, and then you look at the children um, who come here. We get a lot of kids in the summertime. A lot of kids, and some of these children, their parents, they get food stamps to buy food for the kids, and they take them and do other things with them, sell them or do whatever, and then their kids are hungry. And to me, that's so, so bizarre. How can you do that? Not feed your child, you know? Because to me. No child should be hungry. No child should be hungry. The director of St. Francis of Assisi Soup Kitchen says that they typically serve lunch from Monday to Friday. During school breaks, a significant number of children visit. So, in preparation, 
The kitchen sets up shelves stocked with snacks and various types of food, ensuring that children can easily grab them at any time. Insufficient food is not only a matter of quantity, but also nutritional value. While many individuals can afford inexpensive food, it often lacks nutritional quality, being high in starch, low-quality meat, salt and sugar. In particular, those in remote areas often lack access to protein-rich foods like meat or nutrient-dense options such as fruits and vegetables. The term food deserts refers to areas lacking supermarkets or markets, compelling residents to rely on ready-made and canned products for their daily nutritional needs. This dietary practice contributes to health problems like obesity and various other diseases. The hunger and patterns of food scarcity in these areas differ from the experiences of individuals deprived of food in other parts of the world, such as in Asia or Africa. We reach the origin of the ingredients used in preparing meals for those in need at soup kitchens. The Central Pennsylvania Food Bank holds the distinction of being the largest non-profit food distribution organization in Pennsylvania and the Northeast. The phrase, no one should be hungry, stands out prominently on the facility's nameplate, underscoring the food bank's dedicated mission to alleviate hunger. Here we meet Joe Arthur, the executive director of the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank in Harrisburg. Where are the food come from, Joe? Most of the food, uh, uh, first of all, about 80% of the food uh, is privately donated. So most of it's coming from companies, food producers, uh, and also farms. Uh, farms that grow uh, vegetables, fruits, berries, um, and then also dairy. And then uh, uh, between the farms and the companies that manufacture food like this type of product, um, we, we uh, source or receive about a million pounds of food every week and distribute that out to million people in, um, every week. It's a lot. So about 50 million pounds in a year. It, it's a lot, it's a, ver it's a, a very big operation. Oh, this is big All right. one. The concept of food banks in the United States took root in the 1960s initially serving as warehouses collecting food donations to aid those facing hardship. This initiative has persevered for over five decades, with numerous food banks now dispersed across the nation. Initially designed to assist the extremely impoverished, particularly the homeless or those residing in impoverished areas, now the role of food banks has expanded. In times of economic recession or downturn, Food banks have transformed into havens, not only for the homeless, but also for the unemployed and individuals grappling with insufficient income. This warehouse is akin to a supermarket, offering a variety of foods, including items from renowned coffee chain franchises like Starbucks. Everything that, uh, that you would see in an American grocery store, we receive. Um, it's just we don't know ahead of time what we're going to receive. So we're always reaching out to our food donors to see what they have. And as long as it's wholesome, as long as it's still good, we will take it. Whatever we don't receive uh, donated enough of that we really need, we'll buy it. So we'll use money donated by uh, donors of, of money, and then we'll buy food to get uh, the rest of what we need. So we get as much donated as we can, uh, and then we'll buy whatever uh, to kind of close the gap. There are dry foods, canned goods, fresh produce, fruits, vegetables, and essential items like baby diapers. All of these items have been donated by approximately 200 supermarkets and farms. Currently, there is sufficient stock to distribute enough to the numerous soup kitchens across the city. We never ran out. We have uh, over 200 uh, regular donors, of company donors of food. And then we also run what we call food drives. Uh, just people will, will raise food in their community. Uh, if you see those big barrels up there with our, with our food bank's logo on it, um, people will do food drives in their community and collect food from their neighbors. And uh, we, so we'll get food that way as well. Um, but we're always, always, always on the phone trying to, trying to find food. We never run out. 
Stringent food safety regulations and laws are in place in the United States, backed by severe penalties. As a result, all types of food are required to carry an expiration date, a measure aimed at safeguarding consumers. We have in the United States uh, like codes or dates. The expiring date. The expiring, date, right. So sell-by date is, that's just sales. That, right. Um, what really matters is use-by. Right. Um, so we get a lot of food that's between sell-by and use-by, and that's perfectly good. I mean, the quality will be like perfect. Perfect. So perfect, just like you bought it in the yeah. store. Manufacturers often choose a shorter time period than necessary to mitigate proactively potential errors and prioritize the utmost safety. Consumer rights are a significant concern in this context. Manufacturers and distributors are reluctant to risk legal action, resulting in over 30% of food in convenience stores and supermarkets being wasted daily. From a nutritional standpoint, however, many of these foods can still be consumed for several days after their stated expiration dates without spoiling or deteriorating. In the United States, the companies that are, are making this, they're making it all the time. The, 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 the lines are running all the time. So if it doesn't sell in the grocery store by the sell-by, we're receiving it, which is good because this is wonderful. There's nothing wrong with that. It's yeah. perfect. Foods that are really, really high value, really expensive, yeah. um, like yeah, like grapes wow. and blueberries. It's great. I'm always amazed that we get this beautiful food in quantity, and it's perfect. It is. Um, and wow. Like it you know, it's in the grocery store. It didn't sell on time, but it's still very, very good. So I'm every day. I'm amazed at at how much beautiful food that we get. Beyond quality control concerns, food donations from supermarkets can also be written off as a tax deduction. The increasing practice of donating fresh food brings forth new challenges, which require efficient management. The numerous food banks uphold rigorous standards regarding the quality of the food they accept. Accepting food donations does not justify compromising the quality of the food in any manner. Each day, refrigerated trucks from the food bank transport fresh items to soup kitchens across the city. The use of refrigerated trucks and the emphasis on swiftly distributing fresh food contribute to minimal food waste. All of this fresh food has to move really fast. So that can sit on the shelf for a while. This has to be moving really fast. So we've gotten very good at um, uh, moving food quickly. Uh, we have a, a, our truck fleet is now all refrigerated. So we have 16 refrigerated trucks and that really helps. And we always make sure that we have um, partners that need fresh food every day of the week. So we make sure we schedule uh, our partners so that they can receive fresh food. So it's always going really fast. And we, we, we waste very little of this food. Donated food is carefully preserved at the facility. There is a cold storage facility dedicated to storing fresh vegetables and fruit, a freezer room for various meats, and even fresh milk is available for the kids. That's, that's right. A big part of the hunger problem is uh, children. So uh, we work with children's programs and schools to make sure when the kids are not in school, because in school they get school lunch and, and meal programs, but after school, they might not. So we have a lot of after school programs, uh, about actually about 200 children's programs overall uh, that we're serving every day. So um, that's, it's really important because especially small children, if, if they don't have good nutrition when they're young, it could really affect their ability to, to uh, do well in school, to think, to grow. So uh, childhood hunger uh, is really important that we work hard on it. To maintain the quality of food leaving the bank and prioritize children's health, the institution strictly follows a policy of refraining from accepting donations of fresh milk due to its highly perishable nature. Nevertheless, fresh milk is procured using donations to ensure that children have access to the freshest possible. Moreover, this food bank has expanded its services by setting up a small kitchen to educate people about selecting diverse raw materials. The bank regularly receives donations of imported ingredients, such as vegetables used in Asian dishes 
which may be unfamiliar to some Americans. Conducting classes like this helps diversify the menu and minimizes the likelihood of vegetables or other ingredients going to waste. So Thanks. you cannot choose which one that you will get for right. donation, right? right? It depends on people who, who want to donate. It's all up to the f companies and farms right. and watch your step. Um, and what, you know, so we're, it's, uh, it's not scheduled what we're going to receive. Uh, so we, we have uh, chefs and nutritionists who um, are not on our payroll, but donate their time and their talent. And, Is that uh, almost volunteer? Yeah, they volunteer, um, and they're highly skilled. And uh, we invite our community partners here, and I mentioned we have three, 936 of them, and they can come here and bring clients, and we have teaching classes pretty much every day. Additionally, this class provides a culinary education based on nutritional principles. This is crucial because beyond scarcity, part of the problem also stems from not consuming sufficient nutrients. Every year, between 8 and 16% of the United States' energy is dedicated to various aspects of food production, including planting, caring for crops, harvesting, transportation, processing, sales, and storage. The Food Bank's initiative to repurpose food waste is in harmony with the green market concept, a prominent trend in the Western world at present. In addition to providing food for individuals in need, this method actively helps in reducing food and overall waste and lowering unnecessary food production. If, if you're wasting food, that means you have to grow more. So you're putting more maybe pesticides to grow and you know, you're trying to grow so much for, more food than you need. If we weren't here, a lot of that food would just be wasted. So uh, we're part of the, of the green movement to you know, save that food from going to, to the landfills. And um, we're trying to do more and more, uh, uh, particularly with farms, uh, because there's still a lot of uh, farm uh, produce that doesn't get to market. So we know there's more out there. So we, we keep reaching out to have more and more farm donors as well. From the food bank, we visit the origins of the food, the farm. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you. Despite the robust nature of America's food production infrastructure, an alarming 103 million tons of food is wasted annually. This significant waste primarily comprises meat, vegetables and dairy products. Remarkably, while the country produces ample food, one in seven people still face the challenge of having to skip meals or lack access to adequate and nutritious food. A considerable portion of the discarded food contributes to this problem by ending up as waste. This issue doesn't stem from production, but rather from distribution. A considerable amount of food never makes it to consumers due to various factors. This includes excess food on tables leading to eventual disposal, wastage during the production process where edible portions are discarded, and issues at the source of production, whether it be in a garden or on a farm. Food waste is pervasive throughout the entire supply chain, and fruit and vegetables in particular are susceptible to such losses at every stage. Over 40% of the food produced in the US goes to waste. And this figure doesn't even account for fruit and vegetables that are deemed unappealing based on appearance. In industrial production, every piece of fruit must adhere to a standard of beauty, perfection and uniform size. Nowadays, however, imperfect fruit and vegetables are in high demand. It is heartening to witness more farmers embracing the idea of allowing volunteers to harvest fruit and vegetables on their farms. This movement is exemplified by initiatives like Farmers Against Hunger, a collective of farmers actively combating hunger in New Jersey. 
Farmers Against Hunger was started in 1996 because the farmers were tired of seeing their good fresh produce go to waste. And so they wanted to find a way to get it from the farm to soup kitchens, food pantries, churches, places where it could go to people in need. Fruit and vegetables that farmers don't want may have defects or may not meet the size, shape or colour requirements demanded by the market. In some instances, it's a matter of overproduction, with the orders already fulfilled and the surplus remaining on the farm. Such cases prove beneficial to both parties involved. Farmers save time and labour by diverting agricultural surplus from disposal. The food bank receives fresh fruit and vegetables to use as ingredients in the soup kitchen. We work with over 60 farmers and they're very, very busy people. They work <laughs> on their farms <laughs> maintaining all of this and they take their time out of their day to host us, make sure our trucks get loaded. And, um, you know, all of that stems from the fact that they've put their heart and their money and their time into growing this and they want to make sure it doesn't go to waste. Farmers Against Hunger serves as an intermediary between farms and food banks. Volunteers from the group gather agricultural products and the responsibility for transporting them is assumed by the food bank. Apples are a prime example of how to manage fruit and vegetables that may not meet aesthetic standards. Here in America, we have you pick farms. And what that means is you and your- Pick farm? Uh, it's called a you pick farm. Like oh, you pick, you oh, pick. Okay. <laughs> and um, it could be your family coming out on a busy fall weekend to just have a really nice weekend on the farm oh, and, so and pick, pick apples. Okay. So you pick your own apples, you pick which ones you like. And families, you know, might grab one, but five might fall to the ground. Or they might take one and go, oh, I don't really love that one and drop it. Oh, yeah. But the next day or that following week, Week, the farmer allows us to come in and we go through and sweep under the trees ah. and we're able to recover you know over a hundred thousand pounds of apples a year um, that's one example that's one crop we do uh, potatoes for example this week we're gleaning sweet potatoes and um, this could be where you know it's going to frost soon the cold weather is coming and as soon as it comes that crop will be gone so the uh, farmer allows us to come in and harvest as much as we can because if we don't it's just oh, okay. going to go to waste in the ground a decade ago there were 60 volunteers but today the number has surged to 1000 we agree with Joe Arthur, executive director of the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank, that food banks serve as one of the most relevant indicators of poverty. The growth and success of organizations like this, however, are not entirely a positive sign. Nevertheless, as long as hunger persists and poses a threat to people's lives, food banks must persist in fulfilling their duties. In a land of abundance, there are still individuals who face deprivation. In times of scarcity, though, help is accessible. Agricultural products journey from farms to supermarkets, then from supermarkets to food banks, and ultimately from food banks to soup kitchens, where they're prepared for hungry Americans. For some, food banks may feel like a haven, but for others, it's not a place of grandeur or beauty. It's merely a place dedicated to eradicating hunger. <laughs>